Hello and welcome to our latest fund manager interview. Today I have with me Kirsty Desson, who is the co-fund manager of the Aberdeen Standard Investments Global Smaller Companies Fund. Kirsty, thank you for joining me. You're welcome. Around 20% of the fund is in information technology businesses. Could you give a couple of examples of um, businesses that you own in that sector? Yeah, so the weighting in pure tech itself is about 12%. And then if you take into account some of the support services stocks, then you get up to a much higher weighting like you mentioned. Um, but to give you an idea of some of the um, breadth and diversity that's in the fund, uh, three tech names that we hold are um, Appin, Lattice and Kanos, um, which all fit into extremely different parts of uh, um, technology universe. So Appin, first of all, um, is a small cap Australian stock. They are the world leaders in data labeling of all sorts of data, whether it's uh, voice, image, video, um, and their technology is used to annotate um, data feeds um, that are then used in say, consumer electronic devices. So, for instance, if you give your Alexa um, a command, Alexa will process that. The data is broken up and because the way in which it has been annotated by um, Appin, the device will be able to recognize what that um, what your command is and be able to deliver an appropriate answer. So Appen developed not only the data labeling, but also the AI behind it to allow for that instantaneous response. And obviously the key is that the data is labeled accurately so that the response that you get is the right one. Um, so we think that um, this is, a, again, another multi-year investment theme. Um, we've held Appen now for a couple of years. Obviously, the use of data is exploding in all sorts of devices. It's in our everyday lives, and we continue to see really strong growth for this company. In a slightly different uh, spectrum of technology, uh, we also hold a company called Lattice Semiconductor. So what Lattice do is they provide the logic chips that are sort of the interface between your home computer and the cloud and they um, allow for that information flow between uh, your the end user um, and and everything that goes up into the cloud and so they've seen a, a huge um, growth in demand over 2020 and again uh, we think in terms of visibility this is a name that will continue to see very strong growth over the next couple of years. Um, and finally, uh, you know, last week we bought another UK name called Kanos, which uh, again, some people will probably already know. Um, Kanos provide digital solutions in the UK market, particularly for the government. Uh, but they also have a program called Workday, uh, which goes into a number of corporate enterprises um, for HR management solutions. Um, they've had very good feedback in um, on the Workday platform and they are rolling this out in the US and in Europe. Um, so that gives you a flavour of um, some of the different and diverse aspects of technology that we have in the fund. And for more seasoned investors, the outperformance of smaller companies versus larger companies has um, long been a staple um, of equity investing, um, particularly in regard to the UK market. Does this extend to other global markets? Yeah, you're absolutely right. It does extend to other uh, global equity markets. So with the exception of Asia Pac, X Japan and emerging markets across all other geographies, on a risk adjusted basis, we see returns are better in small cap than they are in large cap. And what's really interesting is that at this point in the cycle that we're about to enter, we see small caps outperforming large caps, at least for the next couple of years. So in recent history, if you go back to 2017, we saw a small period where large cap names, particularly the FANG type stocks, the Amazons and the Facebooks actually outperformed small cap. 
and that is now um, beginning to inflect. Uh, valuations on small cap names have come off significantly, and so there's a huge gap between large cap names and small cap names. And um, since the end of last year, we've seen the turning point of that, and therefore we think that um, small cap names will now begin to really motor versus large cap names. And on the whole, um, smaller companies are more domestically focused than larger companies, um, and therefore they're more in tune with the health of the, um, of the, of the economy that they operate in. So when assessing stocks, um, how much of the macro backdrop do you factor in, if any at all? Um, so we are aware of the macro backdrop, and obviously it helps if there's a um, positive industry tailwind. This tends to be captured um, in our quant screening tool, where we see it feeding through into the earnings growth profile of some of the companies that we're looking at. For instance, um, if the sterling is depreciating, what we tend to see is that exporters will start to outperform as um, earnings expectations for, for exporters tick up. Um, when we go through our process, however, we are more focused on the, the fundamentals um, and the, the bottom up strategy. Therefore, the kinds of stocks that we're looking at are ones that can really grow independent of the macro environment. Kirsty, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you for having me.